Zamorak is one of the most challenging bosses in RuneScape 3. He is also one of the most rewarding, whether you're looking to make some cash or earn your next gear upgrades, so he's worth learning. For players still dipping their feet into high level bossing, the fight with Zamorak is not forgiving, it's quite long, and there are a lot of mechanics to remember. But don't worry, the fight is more than doable with some practice, even with basic gear, so let's get into it. Good day everybody. For starters, this video is timestamped. There is a lot to cover for this fight, and I do my best here to break it down as simply as possible, but there is just simply a lot of content, so if you're interested in a particular part of this fight, or need help in a particular area, skip around as needed. Secondly, I want to mention something that should be obvious from the video title, but this guide is for players who are having trouble getting their first Zamorak kills, not counting story mode. There are many players out there with best in slot gear and skillful ability rotations that have this boss down and are running like 500% in rage kills in 7 minutes or less, much less now that I think about it. Anyways, this guide is not for those players who are actually the boss. Um, this guide is for players who are still figuring out how to wean off a full revolution because, sorry guys, there is a lot of manual gear and manual ability input required for this boss. You can't get around it. With the setup I'm going to show you, I'm scraping together 13 minute kills in normal mode. So at zero in rage, basically. Um, this sucks, but it's possible and conducive to learning how to deal with this boss's mechanics so you can do it better and better next time. It takes so long largely because in the craziness of the fight, as I was learning this boss, I forget the mechanics or I fire off the wrong ability or can't even distinguish my left thumb from my right elbow, but it's important to show you that you can mess up and still finish the fight. So here's how this guide will go. I'm going to spend a few minutes on some very high level tips that I think will help you a lot to keep in mind during the fight, just to prepare you, and I'm going to... Uh, jump straight into the fight after that, and I will walk through each and every step of the way, each mechanic, each um, every time something changes, and I will show you exactly what abilities I'm using, what gear I'm switching to, etc. Because uh, I think the best way to learn a fight like this is to jump right into it. I am not going to spend 20 minutes going over all my gear, inventory, and reading what the wiki says about each of Zamorak's mechanics or the pads. I just don't think that's the best way to learn a new boss, especially one with so much to remember. Um, I'm also not going to go into detail about each pad and its effects because you have enough to worry about as a newbie to this fight as it is, but I will go over my preferred order. Uh, using this map, it's 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2. I saw it on Reddit, and a lot of people said it's learner-friendly, and I've had the most success with it, so I'll bring it up again later, don't worry. Uh, after that, I am going to stop at the end and review all my gear and all my abilities one more time and kind of show you what you must have for your action bar and inventory in order to survive. Okay, chapter one, core tips to ready your mind. Number one, embrace death. What I mean is don't be afraid to die when learning this fight. Um, it can be frustrating, especially when you start getting the hang of things, but... The fight gets harder and harder as more edict pads are activated and you die towards the end due to a mishap. But it's alright, and it's just part of the learning curve with a boss this complicated. The most difficult aspect of Zamorak to me, even compared to other high level bosses, is that you not only need to learn a ton of mechanics and how to deal with them, it's that there are many times that you'll need to deal with multiple mechanics and things happening all at once. I can't count the number of times I completely forgot to go to Infernus and kill the witch in between edict pads. Uh, and just sat there doing zero damage to Zamorak because I was distracted by dealing with some mechanics and chugging brews, or when I was focused too much on my vulnerability bombs and my soul split flicking that I didn't prepare for his mechanics properly. You have some room to slip up at zero in rage, but some slip ups at the wrong time will kill you. Just relax, step back, and try to figure out what went wrong if possible. Tip number two to build off of that, reduce the number of actions you're doing when you find yourself overwhelmed and mishandling Zamorak's mechanics. This goes for any boss but Zamorak, especially for the reasons I mentioned. You can see that I brought some things to this fight like vulnerability bombs and power bursts of vitality and some attempts uh, to deal with Zamorak's big bombs. If you watch carefully, you'll also notice that I almost never use them, and I often forget that they're even in my inventory, I forget that I have enough adrenaline to fire off an Omni Power or other useful ability, and I even mess up my overhead prayers all the time. This is because as I'm learning this boss, there are too many things to pay attention to for me all at once, so I just ditched a lot of these extra actions until I stopped feeling overwhelmed. This is important to mention, because although Zamorak uses a lot of auto attacks in between mechanics, you have very very little time to react when he does use special mechanics and they hurt very badly if you're late to react. This is why you don't want to be juggling soul split flicks and vulnerability bombs and manual ability firing and 
whatever else you usually do during a boss fight if you're not calm and if you're not used to this yet. Start with managing your deflect prayers and soul split flicks as needed. Maybe throw down a Volan Bomb and don't forget your sunshine. <laughs> it's okay to keep it here until you get used to the cadence of Zamorax auto attacks and special mechanics. When you've got the flow down and you can react easily to deal with the mechanics, add in more actions that'll make the fight go faster for you. That's it for my tips for now. Okay, let's fight Zamorak. The fight starts once you kill all six channelers that are guarding each pad. There is no need to rush this part really. I move slowly here because I realize I need to turn on the lights in my room because I can't see anything. And I had to finish my beer before the fight started. Do not drink your beer or tea or anything during the fight. The channelers hit kind of hard actually, so I recommend having deflect magic up for them, especially if you're uh, bumming off of Vampir's Amara anyways. My preferred pad order, as mentioned, following this map is 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2. Um, I have played around with a few other orderings, but I have had the most success at zero enrage with this order, and it's very easy to remember. So, the last channeler I kill is next to pad 1, and I just hop onto it. The pad charges up as indicated by the little bar, and once it's full, the edict is activated. It is very important to note that your adrenaline completely refills shortly after you activate a pad, so ideally try to do what I did here. Drop a sunshine on the pad before it's full if possible, and then when your adrenaline is refilled, fire off another ultimate like Omnipower or Tsunami. Alright, before we go further, I must pause and tell you about this dude's health bars. He has three of them, at least three, co uh, three colors of health bars, and you have to do specific things to be able to damage Zamorak. He will begin each phase with a gray health bar of 75,000 HP, and phases here go forward basically every time you activate a pad. When his gray health bar is up, Zamorak heals very quickly. To counter this, you have to stand on a pad and activate it. Then the health bar turns red. It's the same, um, it'll still have his 75,000 health or whatever you got the gray bar down to, but he will stop healing. Once you eliminate this health, his regular green health bar will appear and you'll see it's delineated by little markers. Whenever you damage him enough to reach one of these markers, essentially the next phase starts and he gets his gray health bar back. And you need to activate another pad to turn it red, get it down to re reveal his green bar, and rinse repeat. Now, after the first pad activation, and after you get his green health bar down to go to the next phase, you'll be unable to activate any more pads. Uh, this is because a witch appears in Infernus now and prevents you from doing so. At this point, you have to use the special action button here to go to Infernus, kill the witch, get out of Infernus with the special action button, and then stand on the pad to activate it, the next pad. It's kind of a process and confused me in my first few attempts, especially since Zamorak has a separate mechanic that sends you to Infernus and you have to escape it differently, so I was constantly forgetting for which reason I'm in Infernus. The easiest way to remember that you have the witch to kill in Infernus is when Zamorak says, Heed my call. Heed my call means kill the witch and then go to the next pad. Okay, so let's go through the rest of the fight now. And I'm going to take us back to after we activated the first pad because we need to talk about the first mechanic where he says, this world will burn. This is called Flames of Zamorak, and for this, you need to activate Deflect Melee and Devotion very fast. Next, you'll see that I walk towards him, and there's black sludge, black smoke, whatever, um, that I absorb. This is important for that. The blast that you get a few seconds later is vastly mitigated, depending on how much smoke you pick up. And that was a tad quick, so let's see it again. Um, you can see I flicked on my Devotion a little bit late, actually. Uh, the damage you take isn't too terrible, but Devotion helps. So here, this world will burn, melee, deflect, Devotion a little bit late, walk up. And then after you walk up and get the smoke, you'll see this bar, yellow bar, going down on you. Use Debilitate um, is the easiest way to reduce the damage of that to, as you can see, like 2,000 as opposed to 4,000, what it would be. So, that's it. Deflect melee at best, uh, debilitate to half the damage when the bomb is about to explode on you, when that bar goes down, and that's about it for that mechanic. I go to rune number 3 now, and I hit the button to go to Infernus and kill the witch. Here, uh, make sure you use Anticipate before you approach the witch, because the first thing she does is try to stun you. Um, have Freedom on hand in case you mess it up, or in case she stuns you later, because uh, she does have other stunning moves that she uses. Um, kill her however you like. You do take a little bit of steady damage while you're in Furnace, so it's not great. When you're done, hit the action button again to go out. And then here, you can now stand on the pad once the witch is dead. And um, again, as I mentioned before, if you can drop a sunshine, if your adrenaline is there before the pad charges up, awesome. If not, um, try to do it afterwards, like I did here. 
and then just DPS Zamorak, uh, his red bar will go down, and now you have the next mechanic here. This one sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna rewind us so that we can look at this a little bit better, but the idea is as fast as possible, uh, go stand on the rune that's above your head. Do not touch other runes, you'll take a bunch of damage, but stand on the rune above your head to teleport out. You cannot use the action button to leave Infernus with this mechanic. And once we're out, we find ourselves here. Uh, Zamorak is curled up, and the entire time he has been charging a Chaos Blast, which can hit you for up to 25,000 damage if not mitigated properly. So, the way we mitigate it is to stun him as early as possible, and then fire off as many defensives as you can to reduce the damage. And here is actually a case where I handled it pretty badly and survived anyways, so let's take a closer look at this. As soon as I stepped out of Infernus, I fired off a stunning ability, and it actually splashed. It missed. Um, I know this because a message pops up, a little notification, if you successfully stunned Zamorak. Okay, so that was number one thing that went wrong. Number two thing that went wrong is the same thing, but now I was forced to use more defensives than usual. So here you can actually see that I equipped my shield already, I used Reflect, Resonance, and then I just barely managed to pull off a Debilitate also. Oops, just kidding. Actually it looks like it was too late and I got bombed. Anywho, so here he just does auto attacks for a while so we continue. Um, I keep chipping away at his red health bar slowly and then I need to, uh, well I move over to the next pad here but I can't do anything yet because I need to get rid of his red health bar and then the green health bar. And we see the next mechanic coming very soon here because I took so long to <laughs> phase him. And it always begins with Chaos Unfettered. When you hear that, you need to turn your Protect from Magic back on because he disables your overhead prayers and don't move. Here's what's happening with this one. He makes this little yellow circle around you. If you, it's called the Adrenaline Cage. If you move out of it, he will drain your Adrenaline. You take a buttload of damage or something. I don't know. Um, I didn't move out of it to find out. You just sit in the circle and when the little yellow bar that's going down quickly over you, uh, when it's almost down, you can turn your Protect from Magic back on. And then you just sit there and take it because the damage you take from this mechanic is actually not that bad if you're protecting against it. Now, guess what? We have a surprise guest mechanic in the form of this Chaos Demon that enters the screen now from the left. This dude hits very hard with melee, he only has about 30,000 health or less if you damaged him inside of Infernus. We saw this demon earlier when Zamorak did his other combo mechanic of shooting us into Infernus and we had to step into the correct ruin to get out of there. There was this demon very slowly moving towards the uh, portal at the very end here. Uh, it doesn't pay attention to you in Infernus, it doesn't really attack you or do anything. You can kill it, it's much weaker here, and if you kill it, it does not come into the the real world, I guess, later. Uh, its health grows once it gets the real world. It does a lot of melee damage, so that's one extra thing to worry about. But here's the thing. Uh, whatever damage you do to that demon in Infernus, um, proportionately, its health will stay the same when it comes to the real world. So, if you're, it is much better to run and escape Infernus as quickly as you can because you'll have to deal with the Chaos Blast, and the longer you let that charge, the worse it is for you. But if you have like an Omni Power or something ready, just fire it off at the demon because it'll make it easier once it comes to you. You might kill it, you might not, but whatever. Don't spend too much time dealing with Infernus. It's annoying when it comes to the real world, but you can, if needed, turn on protecting from melee really quickly and then just kill it and then get back to Zamorak. Alright, at this point, I have taken us backwards and rewinded and forward so many times, so let me just get us caught up to where we last left off. The good news is that we have seen all of Zamorak's core mechanics at this point, and the only thing left is to play out the rest of the fight and see all kinds of variations of how many mechanics can hit us all at once. Here's what I mean. Here's that demon that came in. He's low HP, so I dealt with him pretty easily. But at the same time, Zamorak did his flames of Zamorak again, and I barely turned on my deflect melee, ate up all his smoke or whatever. Um, and then I rushed into Infernus to take care of the witch. Boom! What I forgot is that uh, while the Flames of Zamorak little thing is active um, before it explodes on you, so aka as that bar is going down on you, um, if you go to Infernus while that's still active, the blast goes off right away and it does a lot more damage than usual. So <laughs> do not go to Infernus until the Flames of Zamorak explosion has bursted on you. That's the lesson here. Anyways, uh, I dealt with the witch in the whole time it took me to explain that, and now we are charging up the next pad. By the way, you can see up here, in case you forget which pads you have already activated, it did happen to me in this fight that I forgot which pads I activated, and I forgot to check there even, so it was hectic, but anyways, activated this pad, um, sunshine, omnipower when possible, blast down his red health bar, 
You'll see these Chaos Witch healers now. That's a result of one of the pads. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Here he shoots me off into Infernus again and charges another Chaos Blast. So I look for the rune that I need to walk to. Uh, I don't have anything good for that demon right now to hit it with, so I just rush over here and get out of here. I've equipped my shield, and now I go for a stun that is actually successful. He blasts right away, and I barely pull off a Reflect and Resonance. You have to be pretty quick in using your defensives right after you stun, because he will <clears throat> unleash his blast shortly after that. Uh, in the meantime, he hit me with a Chaos Unfettered Adrenaline Cage again. That's the yellow circle. When you see Chaos Unfettered again, and you see the yellow cage, just turn your Deflect Magic back on. And now we have a break, uh, essentially where he just does auto attacks and we just prayer flick. Now when there is a little intermission is a good time to remember your Vuln Bombs or if your Overloader is running out, like mine is pretty shortly I think. And now we have a Chaos Blast mechanic but without the getting sent to Infernus, which is awesome because we can just stun him and then use defensives to mitigate the blast. There, much better than when we were sent to Infernus. And there's another late debilitate again, but whatever. And there's another Chaos Demon coming in. So here... I suggest saving Omni Powers and big things like that if you have like an EOF or something for the Chaos Demons when they get out, which is exactly what I did not do there. I just unloaded an Omni Power on Samurai uh, right before that demon walked in, but it helps to take care of them quickly if you can just unload some nice thresholds or ultimates. Here we're back in Infernus because I have charged up the pad and I need to kill the witch. Uh, Zamrak called Heed My Call so I know it was time, and I jump back out. I now need to go to the next pad and just sit there as it charges up. Uh, this demon is still there, oops, but now my Omni Power is charged. And uh, there we go. It took me a second to figure out what was going on. This is what I mean uh, <laughs> when I say there are a lot of mechanics hitting at once. There's this demon, I have to go to Infernus and take care of the witch. Um, Zamrak's about to do something else quite shortly. Yep, here we go, off to Infernus with a Chaos Blast. Just as I got rid of the last demon, here's a new one. So my Omni Power is again on cooldown, so again, I will choose to ignore him. Nope, oh, just kidding. It's dead. My Omni Power was not on cooldown. So here's my stun. Here's my reflect. Here's my resonance. Not bad. That was a good one. I only took like a thousand damage there. I should have a break here where we just take care of some auto attacks, but whenever he does the Infernal Tomb mechanic, expect the next mechanic to come sooner because we wasted a bunch of time dealing with it. Um, I mentioned earlier that I did not pay attention to everything successfully over the course of this. I completely forgot about pad number 6, and I just went straight to pad number 2. It's fine, I figured it out later. These little traps that you see on the ground everywhere are a result of the last... Uh, hold on, let me go over this first. So... What happened? Hold on. Oh, I got it. I thought my adrenaline got drained, but because I stepped back into that little circle before he started bombing me, my adrenaline was fine. So, woohoo. Uh, turns out you can step out and if you come back in before he starts bombing you, you're fine. What I was going to say was that as a result of the pad number 5 that I activated, there are now traps on each remaining pad and throughout the arena. They will stun you and deal magic damage. Um, once you activate pad number 5, heads up, just start using Anticipate before you run around. Um, here I dealt with another Chaos Blast. Pretty well. Stun, Reflect, Resonance. Uh, make sure your shield is equipped. <laughs> Uh, so now, I think, after this pad, I was still confused because I thought this was my last pad, but I was very confused about why his HP is so high still. But it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to focus on my prayer switches to deflect. I am using a vampirism aura this entire fight, so I don't need to, um, soul split flick too much. Oh, I lied earlier. This is the last mechanic that we haven't seen yet. So this is the Ring of Destruction or something. Uh, standing in the red hurts you, standing in the black smoke sludge hurts you more. So, stand here, away from the red when possible. Pay attention to the black sludge, it changes directions randomly. When it comes around, step into the red because it's less bad. I believe the black sludge can also stun you, that's happened to me before. I can't confirm by reading the wiki and I don't feel like checking, but just avoid the black sludge. Uh, throughout that phase, you know, or that mechanic, you might find yourself taking a lot of damage. It's okay. As the fight progresses, generally speaking, you will take more and more damage, especially if you start with pad number one, and there is also another pad that uh, increases the damage that you give and take by 5% per stack uh, whenever you're standing on a pad. So be mindful of that. Um, even if the fight is easy at first with a Vampirism Aura, you may need to Soul Split Flick more and more as the fight progresses because you will definitely be taking more damage. 
that last pad was activated, I got Zamorak down to his uh, gray bar or whatever, and now I'm activating this pad, finally. He's becoming increasingly upset at me, and shortly we see that he hits me with another Flames of Zamorak, so um, I didn't know it was coming, but I just kept my wits about me. And as soon as it comes, I hit Deflect Melee, and whoops, I was actually late, but at least my Devotion was on time. So I just took one big hit and absorbed the rest with Devotion. And then I just go back here, and I take a big bomb, but I debilitated beforehand, so it only hit me for like 2,000. Here, once I phase him to the next, well, nope, sorry, Chaos Blast. Stun, shield, reflect, resonance. Close enough. Onwards. Nothing interesting happens for a little bit here as I just chip away at his HP. We're just dealing with auto attacks. Um, again, it's a good time to check your overloads. Mine is actually running out this time, it looks like. Vulnerability bombs if you have them, all that, etc. Practice your soul split flicking now. So here, it's time to move to the next pad. And what I mentioned earlier... Whoops, no, sorry, it looks like I decided to hit the witch first. But I'll explain it before we get to it. Um, I mentioned that there are now traps on the ground as a result of pad 5. You can use anticipate to um, anticipate them and not get stunned and then just run over them and deal with the magic damage or the counter effect the benefit of that pad is that if you stand next to the sword of edicts in the middle of the arena you gain temporary immunity to those pads so um, here I think I got lost and I'm just chipping away at his gray health bar but not realizing that he's gonna heal a crap load and then I finally woke up um, ran away, still prayer flicking, semi-successfully, but taking more damage now, like I said. I am next to the Sword of Edicts, I found the pad that I forgot to activate, and now I can just stand on it without any problems, uh, and just minor magic damage. So, here we go. Last pad, activates briefly. Um, I hit a Sunshine before the pad regenerated my adrenaline, and now I'm free to blast this dude with whatever I want. We've got the red health bar. And now he wants to send me... Nope, not back to Infernus. You're already dead is the Ring of Destruction, this one. So, not bad, because we can still damage him. By the way, you cannot go to Infernus while this mechanic is active. It doesn't really suck right now, but um, if you were looking to go to Infernus... Uh, yeah, you can't while this is active. I didn't even realize that he hit me with Flames of Zamorak while this other mechanic was active. That sucks, but it looks like I caught it enough. By the way, you'll notice at this point I am just chugging bruise because I still cannot be asked to pay attention to soul split flicking. I'm barely uh, surviving with everything else. I am chugging the rest of my bruise and some of my emergency sharks because, check it out, he has 40,000 health. Um, and then he hits me with this crap. I ignore the demon here because he's almost dead. I just go to this rune, which was luckily close. Stun, shield, reflect. Uh, how well did this go? Okay, that didn't go that well. Anyways, I still have some food, so he has 3000 HP, that's like an Omni Power and a half. Just survive. You will take more damage, like I said, because especially if pad number one was activated early, which it should be, um, the Hex that Zamorak activates as a result of that is Twin Shot. It grants him an extra attack with increasing damage, and there is another pad somewhere that increases da the damage you would give and take while on a pad. But, as long as you are okay chugging brews and food through the last of this fight, as a beginner, here you are. You'll have done it. Thanks, Rasiel. All right, that's it. That's the fight. It's a lot. I told you, but uh, part of the point of showing you such a crappy run, like I mentioned, um, instead of just rehearsing and getting a better run, is to show you how much can go wrong and how much you can be okay with. Uh, my sign of life for my defense cape looks like it activated at one point, probably when I went to Infernus and blasted myself or something. But yeah, that's important to have as well. I just wanted you to know that if you handle something badly, or you're almost dead, or you take a lot of damage, don't teleport, don't panic necessarily, you can still make it through, get the kill, and then do better next time. Alright, so that was the fight. As promised, let's do a quick review of everything that we used and everything that we need to survive this. So, deflect prayers for magic ranged melee need to be very accessible. Devotion also needs to be hotkeyed, as you saw. Do not fire this off at your leisure because you need it for Flames of Samurak, the first mechanic that you'll see, and that you'll see very often. Soul Split should be flickable as well, please practice that because you should not expect to just camp it even with very high damage reduction. Uh, my Iron doesn't have Crypt Bloom to give it a run with that, but considering that it does nothing to reduce the Zamorak's ranged auto attacks anyways, you should expect to switch between Deflect Magic and Range throughout the whole fight. 
um, since Zamrak's auto attacks switch between those two, and they hurt, especially as the fight progresses. Anticipate is very handy for dealing with the witches in Infernus, since the very first thing they do is stun you, and then uh, they hit pretty hard as well. <laughs> That being the case, having freedom handy is great too in case you forget to anticipate or the witches stun you as you fight them. You must have at least one stun ability ready to go manually, the more the merrier though, in order to mitigate the chaos blast mechanic that again hits up to 25,000 damage if not dealt with properly. Each combat style has its basic ability that stuns, the threshold that does higher damage and stuns, and then the channeled one like asphyxiate. If possible, when the time comes, have the higher damage threshold stun ready to go. Um, I learned the hard way that when dealing with the mechanic in question, you also need to hit a damage threshold that the weaker basic might not get you to, not just stun. Um, don't worry, uh, you'll be fine anyways. Next you have defensive abilities, the more the merrier again, and with very very easy access uh, via hotkeys. At a minimum, you'll need a shield or defender, resonance, and either reflect or debilitate. Um, actually, have all these on hand, um, but the reason I say either is when the time comes, as you saw, to deal with the aforementioned mechanic, Chaos Blast. If you are quick, you'll have time to stun Zamorak, switch to your shield, and use two defensives. I prefer reflect and then resonance. There's little room for error, and every single time I have exactly enough time to pull all this off. The extra defensive like Debilitate is available in case you mess up the stun uh, like you saw me do or if you're still in Infernus while zamrak has been charging his Chaos Blast and you just need to use a third defensive to stay alive. On that note, if you like Power Bursts of Vitality, those are also great in a pinch for surviving the Chaos Blast. The tier of shield actually doesn't really matter for these abilities than the way I'll use them. Uh, actually a higher tier of shield would probably help Resonance soak up more damage but I'm actually using a tier 70 defender, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm also publishing this guide right before Necromancy releases, but if Bone Shield turns out to be any good, you can use that too, in lieu of a shield switch and I have one less thing to worry about. Lastly, movement abilities are very helpful to have on hand. You should have at least Surge hotkeyed anyways, but ideally having double Surge and Dive will save you a lot of time um, as you traverse from pad to pad. It just feels really bad to spend a lot of time running between pads, just getting blasted by Zamrax, increasingly powerful auto attacks, and not healing yourself back from Soul Split or Vampirizamora. Double lastly, uh, you can stay mostly on full revolution as I am here, except for ultimates. The only ultimates I personally could be bothered to use are Sunshine and Igneous Omnipower. You should absolutely have these hotkeyed and not in your full revo bar if you're used to that normally. Um, you'll die for sure if you drop a Sunshine before Zamrak pulls off, like Chaos Blast or a mechanic that requires Devotion or multiple defensives. By the way, if you don't have the Zook Cape yet for Igneous Omnipower, and yes it's pronounced Zook, he says so himself, um, I seriously suggest checking out my guide for getting your first Zook kill with terrible DPS and cheap gear. If it turns out that Zook is problematic for you, you surely will be overwhelmed by Zamrak, and it would help to get some practice in at uh, Zook anyways. That about covers it for my setup, I think. Uh, I have vulnerability bombs hotkeyed as I mentioned, um, and as I mentioned as well, I forgot about them most of the time. If you have anything else, like an Essence of Finality uh, special, go ahead and keep that in as you're used to it, and just use uh, things like that whenever you're able to stay focused. Regarding my actual gear, it's nothing very special, and I don't want to spend a lot of time telling you about it. Uh, for learners, I recommend an Animate Dead setup with a Vampirism Aura like I had here. Uh, use your best dual wielded magic setup to leverage greater concentrated blast, um, unless of course you're running a fractured armadillo staff, and the best magic tank armor available. By the way, this totally slipped for me, but Zamorak is immune to poison, so if you are leaning on animate dead, use tank gloves instead of cinder banes like I just kept for my setup here. My invention perks are best in slot ish for budget setup. My main hand spell is Exsanguinate. Uh, if you want to use Incite Fear instead, that can be better if you plan on firing off a lot of tsunamis. It just consumes more runes, and I'm an Iron Man and I hate runecrafting, so I just stick to Exsanguinate. It's good enough. My familiar of choice is the Ripper Demon. Many players uh, actually prefer Hellhounds here because they offer a massive 20% damage reduction, but I played around with this a lot myself and I didn't like it at all. I even tried a Hellhound with the Aegis Aura. Aegis? Aegis Aura? which gives a further 10% damage reduction, including to Zamrak's typeless big bombs. Uh, so it's a big deal, but I actually had a harder time and I haven't had any kills that way. Uh, this is because your DPS with a setup like mine is already average at best, and choosing the Hellhound over the Ripper Demon sacrifices even more DPS, which means that you'll give Zamrak even more time to use special mechanics. And for me, that just hurt much more than whatever the Hellhound was absorbing. Also, if you use a Hellhound, you'll have to heal it often because that 
20% damage reduction only exists because the Hellhound takes it itself. The easiest way to do this is with the Prism of Restoration spell, it's ancient magics, but this is also one more thing to worry about. Not a big deal, but I didn't like it. Ripper Demon and Vampirism Aura is my learner recommendation for Familiar and Aura. And so that is all, everybody. <laughs> that is Zamorak, and that is how I am learning him. <laughs> Um, I wanted to make a guide like this that, again, is purposely kind of bad because I have seen other Zamorak guides on YouTube, I have used them, and no one ever really talks about what to do when things go very badly. So, I think it's important. I think there are a lot of learners out there like myself who are not into advanced high-level PVM tactics yet that really want to learn this boss and uh, just struggle. So, I really hope this helped you if you have been struggling to just get your foot in with this boss and get some of these super nice rewards from him. Uh, please leave a comment if you think this helped or uh, if there is anything I missed that you would like to add that helped you. If you like this video in general and you would like to see other more helpful guides, please consider liking this one and subscribing to my channel. I would appreciate it very, very much. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Thank you.